The Steel and Engineering Industries Federation of Southern Africa says it's working on plans to help South Africa mitigate the impact of steel and aluminium tariffs by the United States. The U.S. rejecting South Africa's application to be exempted from the newly imposed import duties. We're joined now by Ole Lwamlumbi Peter from the Department of Trade and Industry. Thanks for your time tonight. You're describing this decision as South Africa being caught up as collateral damage between a trade wars that are taking place in some of the um, countries that are involved here. Tell us why you think we are the victims here. Well, if you look, Cathy, at uh, South Africa's exports, uh, we only account for 1.6% of total imports of the U.S. and also only 0.98% when it comes to imports of steel. So really, South Africa is not a major exporter into the U.S. So it is for that reason that we feel that we are not a threat to U.S. national security nor U.S. Uh, industrial capacity. So for that reason, we are of the view that uh, really the measures that are being imposed, especially on South Africa, given that countries that account for 58% of imports when it comes to steel, as well as 49% when it comes to aluminium, have been exempted. Do you think that part of the reason why this decision and even the applications, the submissions we've made uh, to be exempted have not been accepted is because um, the difference where we're concerned is so marginal, at least on the part of the U.S.? I didn't get that, Cathy. So what I'm asking you is, because we only contribute, as you've said, to less than 1% of the overall um, exports that would end up in the, in the U.S., do you not think that's why our considerations have not, our submissions rather, have not been accepted? No, we don't think so, uh, because the whole purpose of this measure is to try and deal with an increase in imports. So if you look at uh, the contribution of South Africa, it is really much now. So it, for that reason, we should be one of the countries that are exempted because we do not pose a threat to U.S. national security. Because the U.S. has indicated that it is undertaking this investigation using the national security exceptions of the WTO under Article 21. So for that reason, if you look at uh, South Africa's contribution and the fact that we are not a threat to U.S. national security, we are of the view that the measures should not be applicable to South Africa. Uh, so then why do you think the U.S. has then go gone ahead, even in spite of our submissions uh, by the ambassador there and the various trade uh, negotiations that have taken place? The reason that was given to us uh, is that the U.S. has taken a decision not to expand the countries that it exempted in March. Uh, so we didn't get any further explanation beyond that. Do you think there is something more sinister at play here? Well, it's difficult for us uh, to say so uh, because we are not the only uh, country that is not exempted. There are a number of countries that have been engaging the U.S. that have not been exempted. So we can't say specifically there's a target on South Africa. But of course, we remain concerned with regards to the impact of these measures on our jobs as well as the productive capacity. But most importantly, we are concerned about the impact uh, with regards to the competitiveness of our products into the U.S. Because especially in now that this measure is applied uh, in a differentiated approach when it comes to U.S. trading partners, what it means is that those countries that are exempted will not be subjected to uh, the payment of the duty, while South African products will be subjected to the duty, which will make our products to be more expensive than products coming from the exempted countries. And, and of course, the risk there is that um, those products, our steel and aluminium products, could be, um, you know, displaced on U.S. Shelves, but what does it mean for the local industry? What does it mean in terms of actual jobs in South Africa and the manufacturing industry? 
The exports, uh, when it comes to steel, account for 5% of our productive capacity. And uh, the industry has indicated that uh, equates to about 7,500 jobs. So it's quite a significant number of jobs that are at risk. And the other challenge that we're going to have is that a number of countries that currently cannot export to the US without the duties may be looking for alternative markets and may increase exports of steel and aluminum into South Africa, which will um, have a, um, another impact uh, on our productive capacity. But also, most importantly, uh, this is a sector that is already suffering from the global steel glut or overcapacity of steel in the global market. And we have um, been faced with low price steel coming into the South African market. And this has had an impact in terms of uh, our potential to expand our productive capacity, but also has, in some cases, led to um, companies at reducing productive capacity. So uh, as a country, we have then taken measures to try and protect our steel um, industry, and we have increased our duties to the maximum allowed in the WTO when it comes to primary steel as well as um, the downstream um, industry. But also, we have also put in place a safeguard measure to try and reduce um, the imports that are coming into the country. Do you think at all this speaks to a level of uh, perhaps a, a shift in how we can expect the trade relationship between South Africa and the U.S. to be going forward? Or um, do you see it as this being one of those exceptional incidents? Well, I think the starting point is to say that we really enjoy very strong, increasing, and relatively balanced trade relations with the U.S. And over time, we have seen an increase in exports of South African products into the U.S. Uh, we export over 80 billion uh, products into the U.S. market, and their um, uh, products of or exports into South Africa have also increased. So we have been enjoying relatively balanced uh, trade relations. We've also seen an increase in investment by uh, U.S. companies in South Africa. We currently have over 800 uh, U.S. companies that have invested in a number of sectors uh, in South Africa. So for us, uh, we really see this as one of the issues, of course, that are of concern uh, with regards to the impact that this will have on our economy. But we are not of the view that this will dent uh, the trade relations.